They say it filled the skies with ash and the lakes with molten rock. Alright, so right now we're going to demonstrate the CC skip. Uh, so there's two aspects to this. One is the setup, and two is actually doing the trick. Uh, I'm going to start by just showing off how to do the trick, which means I'm going to kill, like, everything and just get a clear area here so I can demo the trick without any interruption. And as soon as I got that squared away, we'll uh, talk about the setup. And when I'm talking about setup, I'm talking about the... Uh, Sure, let's Never pick up some pecker nests. So much uh, I'm talking about the ash. way that you move at the beginning of the level, so that when you get here... So this is the spot for the CC skip. It's right here. And the goal is to move in such a way from the beginning of the level to get here, so that the big pecker is not coming after you, and so that you get here at roughly the fastest way that you can get here, so that you have the optimal timing to get the skip. Uh, so that's not, that's not that hard. I mean, even if I didn't demo that, you guys could figure it out. But it's just easier to show it off. So there's a nice close arsenal. So whenever you want to practice CC skip, you just come to this thing uh, and fill up whenever you're out of stuff. Also, there's just a bunch of random crap to blow up around here. Just get everything out of the way so you don't get caught on random stuff. I'm gonna cl clear out the monsters over here too, just to get them out of the way. But still, we pressed on. So many objects in the way. All right, that should be plenty. Okay. Please die. That all the ones? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so the CC skip. The principle of the trick is that you're gonna go from right here to right down here. And the only way this works is, uh, incidentally, when I'm mousing over things, uh, look at where the center of the pointer is pointing. There's actually a shadow right below the pointer that it determines where the kid moves, but don't look at that. Look at the center of the pointer there. So you have to land right about here. Notice that where I'm saying right about here is off the edge of the platform. The only way that you'll know that you got the trick is that when you land on this side, right here, you will see your shadow appear below you. Uh, let me see if I can show you an example. So notice when I'm standing off the edge of the platform there, you can see right below my feet, there's a little shadow. If, when you land over here, you can see that shadow on the ground, or actually in midair, that means you got the trick. And it should not require falling. Like, once you land on this side, you shouldn't have to fall in order to continue on. You should just be able to go straight. So, the way to set this up is you have to roll here, along the edge of this thing. Now, now remember, the little shadow right below my cursor is where the kid is going to move when I click. So if I put it right in the center of this little square here, this square, if I put it right in the center, he moves right in the center, right? And if I put it right on the edge, he moves right on the edge. And if I put it on the other side, he moves over there. So the shadow is where the kid's going to move, so keep that in mind. Now here's the thing, when I go over here to this corner, notice I'm floating off the edge. There's a very little extra bit of leeway there that is basically really tough to deal with because here's the problem you have to roll onto this little tiny extra bit of space and then pike vault off of it but the game if you're rolling watch this notice how it's a little different than where the ground actually appears to be so it's not exactly cooperative there's a very tiny sliver of land and if you move it all you're done so, sadness. Alright, so here's the thing. We want a pike vault. We want to roll off the edge of this thing. Pike vault as late as we conceivably can. And we've got to aim at this space right here. Again, the center of my cursor, not the shadow. We're going to aim right down here. Uh, if you look at the ground down here, you'll notice that there's this 
this this place where it goes in and then down this way a little bit that L shape you kind of want to get in the crook of that L shape right about here so let me see if I can get it to do timing this is sensitive like I said even though the ground lasts until right there it's really irritating I hate this trick. Okay, that was not quite it. Notice that I aimed... Okay. So notice that I aimed right around here towards the bottom edge of this little L here. That's too far down. It's got to be further up like here. If I can even get a pike vault off. Okay, so that was the right angle, but it wasn't far enough because I didn't go off the edge before pike vaulting. That, again, that was just bad timing of the way that I did the pike vault. That was not quite it either, obviously. That was close, but no cigar. So now we're out of black rice, so we're gonna come right back to the arsenal and restock and go right back to work. This is what I did for about nine hours at AGDQ, which is practice this one trick, and I still couldn't get in the run. And I still can't get it consistently. Basically what I'm going for in this stream is a little bit of two things. One, I'm going to talk a lot, and hopefully that'll explain my thought process. And then two is, I'm just going to repeat the trick over and over. I'm going to hope that helps people watch what I'm doing with my cursor, and by watching, understand what I'm actually trying to do. So even if I'm saying the wrong thing, if you can watch me do it over and over, that might help you do it. That was actually really close. So here's the way that I set it up. So when you land, you're always going to fall right here after failing the trick. So the easiest way to set back up to try it again is you go up and around like that. And you're going to cut this top edge right here really close. So you're going to go up, cut that top edge really close, and there's the trick. All right? So again, notice that I landed like right here. Again, it's in the kind of the crook of the L. It's not as close to that corner as I maybe said before, but it's right about here. Let me kill off this guy too. Get out of the way. Alright, so let's show you that again. So again, we, we land here, up and around, and we get it. So the important thing that I'm doing here that I wasn't doing before is I'm really hugging the top edge here. If you watch the way the kid is moving, my feet are going to really ride the edge of this uh, block right here. So again, I'm going to start from here, go around. I rolled a little too late there. Again, we're going to go up and around. And that was just a little bit off, just a tiny bit. I know, Laz, I really should stream earlier. I would like to stream earlier. It's hard on some days of the week. So again, back to the arsenal to refresh. The arsenal is kind enough to replenish your stock of health potions and uh, black tonics, in case you didn't already know that. All right, that I rolled a little too early. Again. So this is like the only consistent setup I've ever found to do this trick, is to do the up and around thing, and then hug the top edge of this thing. And you're gonna get it, not most of the time, but you're gonna be able to get it reasonably consistently, given how stupid the trick is. Like, I should have got it there. I was just a tiny, tiny bit off. I might have been like a frame late on, or flame, frame early on rolling, or something like that. It's really touchy and dumb. So, notice on the one that I just did, I kind of had the mouse cursor down this way this angle here, and I had to move it over to the left. If you don't angle your thing pretty much the right angle immediately, you're not going to get the trick, period, end of story. Because if you go anywhere off the correct direction, you're screwed. It's That's it. Uh, how much time does this save him lost? This is three to four seconds. Uh, if you miss it once, it's about one and a half seconds, probably. 
I'm not 100% exactly sure, because when you do this trick, you actually set up the level differently than you do if you're not doing this trick, and I'm not 100% sure that I can get an optimal Colford Cauldron both with and without the trick to compare the times. It's really, really hard. Like, even in my PB, I got the trick, but I missed a different trick in Colford, so it actually still was not optimal, so I can't compare that way. I'm going to try to show it just a few more times, and then we're going to reload the level, and I'll show you what uh, you do to set up from the beginning of the level. That was not even close. So the problem there was I didn't hug this edge enough, and then I rolled too early. Alright, that was way, way off, although could have been could have been closer if I just had the right angle. Too early of a roll, obviously judging by the distance that I had. You'll easily get a feel for like how far away you can land and actually get the trick. But yeah, this trick is just practice over and over and over again. And know where the sweet spot is, that's it. And then it's all muscle memory, like there's there's basically no way that I can tell you a, a visual cue for aiming this, this cursor over here to get the jump. Because I don't have a visual cue for it, I just have muscle memory, that's it. Oh, the arsenal also gives you an automatic full heal, so it is very, very nice. Yeah, if you don't get this exact setup, it can be really dicey. Oh, by the way, if you don't immediately roll after landing here, you will fall. Uh, so that's actually part of the thing. Basically, you've got to roll, uh, land, and then roll immediately. It's a decently, like, it's a, it's not a very sensitive window to get it. Like there, I actually delayed a fair bit before I pressed the roll button. That one was instant. As soon as I landed. You can press it pretty much as soon as you land. Any delay is a waste of time, so press it quickly. Uh, the other thing is there will be brambles right here when you roll across, but that's not a huge deal. You'll roll into the brambles, and then you just pike thrust one time to get through them. Uh, I would recommend using the musket, but the problem with using the musket is that uh, the brambles are so close, some of them will actually be in the musket's dead zone, so they actually won't die, and then you'll just be forced to pike thrust anyway. So you might as well just preemptively pike thrust. Okay, so what we're going to do is reload the level, and I will show how to do that from the start of the level, because there is a particular strategy that you want to use. Uh, there's basically no way I can tell you this strategy without going at max speed, so I'm gonna go at max speed. And if you guys have questions, I'll try to help explain. The smell. So, the you get up. This is standard. Roll, wait, roll, roll, roll and pike fall. This is the normal stuff. Roll, one, two, three, four, five. One, two... As for us, Actually, you're supposed to musket that shit. Oh, okay. So right here, you're supposed to get into the space, roll once through, wait for the ground to form, one, sure two. Off a good Notice that specific attack. pattern causes the big pecker to fly directly north. Off, Come down here, and After off you go. All, and I missed it, but that's okay, because we get another shot. Still okay. Just kill the dude. 
Yeah, so there's the other problem. If you try to, like, musket at the time that you roll through, you're going to have a bad time. Look down through all the so let me show that again. Flames. So again, the very beginning here is standard. Everything else is pretty, a little bit different. Roll, 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 vault. One, two, three, four, five, six. Come through here. One, one, two. One, two, three. One, two. Went a little too fast. You can get rid of the rubble if you want, it doesn't really matter. It kind of gets in the way, but you shouldn't be clipping it if you uh, do the lineup properly. I don't know why I tried musket again. Let's do that again. Also, I count different ways, but basically the gist is is pretty clear if you watch what I'm doing. Don't get too attached to like the way I'm counting things or anything like that. The important thing is the actual pattern, the rolls that are happening uh, is the important thing. Usually, if you do the rolls at a particular cadence, at particular timing, you will always be okay. Even though the ground forms up kind of in a random way, the way I do the movement accounts for that for the most part. So again, the roll, wait, roll, the roll, roll, pike roll. One, two, three, four, five. They say five. it fill the skies one, with two, ash. Three. The lakes with there. Rock. As for us, one, we learned two. an awful lot from I actually did it slightly different sure, there, but it's not a huge deal. Good many secrets out here, but we discovered other things were better off. That was bad, but the second one will be okay. When we look down inside, Colford That was Coltrane. terrible, actually. I rolled way too early. This one will be good. Nope. Old way too late, because I was compensating. Also, the only reason that you don't want the big pecker to be here is that uh, there's a distinct chance he can kill you. That used to matter more on New Game Plus because of the uh, champagne that you picked up, but uh, because you don't pick up champagne anymore, it's not really a big deal. Uh, the other thing is, in both categories, they're not going to have Black Rye, which means you're only going to get uh, two shots to do it. So you have two attempts, after you miss it once, you're already losing time, uh, practically. Uh, because this, the side up for the second time is going to eat a lot of the time that uh, you would have taken anyway. Uh, so yeah, you're basically losing time as soon as you miss it once. Fun trick. Anyway, let's go back to the bash and we'll try it again. Also, something that I see a lot of people do is, uh, as they're progressing through the beginning of the level, they shoot the skeleton that's there near the... after the first gate, they shoot that skeleton out, and that's just a waste of time. I have no idea why anyone One actually does that. If you roll properly, you're not gonna get caught by the hand on the way out, so you shouldn't like waste your time. Eggs. The cauldron boiled over some 300 years ago. They this thing right here, everyone always seems to shoot that out. Stop lakes. wasting your time. As for us, also, that was a terrible, off terrible off movement. Cauldron. Sure, we dusted off a good many secrets out here, but we discovered other things were better off not knowing. That after was close, all, actually. When we looked down inside Colford Cauldron. That was also close. I had to change the angle a little bit. That ruined me. That is good. Okay, that's actually, it is possible to get the clip, uh, get the skip and still fall, but that's when you get a bad landing position. We had to have it. No problem, Veril. Hopefully this helps. Hopefully you will be able to do this in your runs at some point. Because that will easily, easily get you sub-14. We'll do it again for good measure. And then we'll probably move on to a different trick. I'm gonna try not to make One this an entire, like, all IL strat stream because 
I have to eat at some point, and I haven't really done that tonight. But I do want to show off some of the stuff that seems to elude people. A lot of this is really muscle memory. As for us, we learned an awful lot from Colford Cauldron. Sure, we dusted off a good many secrets out here. But we discovered other things were better off. Yeah, because I had my angle going down initially down and then changed it to go, I actually got the skip, but I also got the fall. So you get up, poke out the thing, Look move on. All the smoke and, flames. We had and then the rest of the level is normal. I'll just show the end of the level strats because a lot of people don't seem to fully to understand this. Walk here until you get to the end, and then you can roll twice there. Once you get up, roll here, wait, roll up there, and then go through and around. It's really easy to dodge the skeleton. There's no reason you have to shoot him out earlier. So let's do that one more time. I know I said one more time, and then did it one more time, and now we're going to do it one more time, because I'm saying one more time. But we'll, we'll get to it eventually. We'll get to other stuff eventually. I just want to be very, very clear about this trick and about how it integrates into the route strat, uh, into the IL strat. Because if you set this up wrong, the pecker is going to be there and it's just going to make your life miserable. The cauldron boiled over some 300 years ago. They say it filled the skies with ash and the lakes with molten rock. As for us, we learned an awful lot from Colford Cauldron. Sure, we dusted off a good many secrets out here, but we discovered other things were better off. That was actually them. really close. After I probably should have gotten that. We looked down inside Colford. That, Colford. on the other hand, is it? There you go. That's my first clean one. Look down through all the smoke and flames. We had through the fire and flames. As for the kid, he just has to get that shard out of there. Too bad taking that thing. Boy, so yeah, all the all the figuring out how that actually worked was basically completely by accident. Uh, shout outs to Red Buddha, obviously. He was the one that first actually did this Pike Vault. But he never like he was never able to figure out how exactly he did it. And he didn't really put a whole lot of hours into it, uh, because it I mean, obviously, it's a very marginal time save, and uh, there was lots of other stuff that could have been optimized at the time, so doing something this crazy didn't really, like, rate at that time. But uh, basically, I just tried random stuff one day, uh, actually the day before I left for AGDQ, and accidentally managed to do it, and then at the marathon, I figured out how to make it consistent. Uh, as consistent as it can be, so. But yeah, basically the whole point of the, uh, right here is you're gonna go through the level as normal, and once you get to that point, there's that setup I showed you where you go up and around and curve along the very edge of that block there, and that's what you're gonna do, is you're gonna go through the level in such a way to direct the big packer away and not fall, you're gonna get to that point, get right up next to the rubble, and then set up the normal up and around and do the trick. Uh, that is the easiest thing I've found. Certainly you can do it without that setup, I just have not found a consistent timing that actually works for me to do that. So doing the little up and around setup really makes it possible for me, and that costs you around half a second, so it's not that huge of a deal. So.